Megami Tensei and Persona almost always have multiple layers to the way that their stories and characters are written. In Persona, the main characters often not only have traits that align with their arcana, but with the traits of their persona as well. After all, a persona is the inner self, an archetypal replication of their personality in mythological and sometimes pseudo-historical or religious terms. They aren't just written on this basis either, as they most of the time are also written to correlate with how the other characters and personas within the story are within their mythological context, or as with Persona 4, within the mythological underpinning message of the game itself. This is just one of an ongoing 30 plus part series analyzing every aspect of Persona 4 Golden, and not just recapping stuff with occasional half-hearted opinions put in and saying it's analysis. This is an actual analysis. If after watching this video you want me to keep dumping time into making these, please leave a like, comment, and if you can, please support my Patreon. Anyway, let's get on with the show. Today, I'm just covering the backstory and true meanings of the main cast from Persona 4 Golden, not the overarching mythology, or even other characters important to the story, like Amino Sagiri and Izanami. Those have their own videos. We'll just be covering the main cast and their ultimate personas. As for the mythological backstory for each of the investigation team's personas, let's start with the protagonist, who has Izanagi, one of the two gods who birthed Japan and created the other births of the gods who are listed in the ancient Japanese document Kamiyumi, which covers the time after the birth of Japan. The story of Persona 4 Golden has much to do with the reuniting of a vengeful Izanami and the protagonist wielding Izanagi after the events of the Kamiyumi, but once again that will be discussed in more detail elsewhere. After going to the land of Yomi or the underworld, Izanagi seeks to purify himself, and from that purification, the many gods were born. Before I link this to the others, I think it should be said that this is really fitting for the protagonist of a Persona game, as the protagonist can hold the personas of countless gods, spirits, beings, and archetypal figures. Then to say, from Yu's first Persona Izanagi, Yu Narukami began to be able to obtain and create further personas and gods, fits the characteristic of Izanagi as a mythological figure as well. The mechanic of having multiple personas suits Izanagi's own story of birthing the gods from his purification. It should also be mentioned that the ultimate weapon the protagonist gets in Persona 4, done so by killing the Reaper, is the Blade of Totsuka, which is also a reference to Izanagi, who killed his son Kagatsuchi with the same blade in revenge for Izanami's death. The full name of the blade is Totsuka no Surugi. While Tomoe, Chie's initial persona, refers to a hyper-mythologized and possibly fake historical figure, Tomoe, which is based on the family that fought for the creation of the first shogunate, Tomoe was also said to be a warrior willing to fight any demon and having the strength of a thousand people. Chie's ultimate persona, however, connects back to Izanagi directly. Haraido, or Haraido no Okami, the name Haraido, coming from Harai, refers to redemption or purification. Therefore, Haraido no Okami are the gods enshrined in Haraido, sometimes also said as the Harai Dono and Harai Dokono. On the day that Izanagi performed the great Misogi no Harai, or purification rite, upon leaving Yomi in his own story, the gods of purification were born, one of which being the birth of Chie, or her ultimate persona, Haraido no Okami. Yukiko's ultimate persona is, of course, Amaterasu, and is a pretty culturally well-known kami even outside of Japan. But who is Amaterasu? Well, Amaterasu is a female goddess of the sun, who was birthed alongside Chie during the purification process, exactly when Izanagi washed his left eye. Amaterasu is the god of sunlight, a great overlooking being, her Japanese name roughly meaning the great divinity illuminating heaven. Yukiko's initial persona is Konohano Sakuya, who is said to be goddess over the volcanoes and sakura blossoms. I mention this because the ultimate fire move in Persona 4 Golden, only accessible to Yukiko, is a severe fire type move called Burning Petals, which animates as a blossoming flower. Yosuke's ultimate persona is Suzano, who was also birthed from the same harai that Yukiko and Chie came from, this time from washing his nose in the purification process. Suzano is also the brother of Amaterasu, and they have many stories listed together. It should be said as a small bonus that in the Persona 4 fighting games, you may recognize Tsukiyomi, who is actually another god birthed from Izanagi from washing instead this time his right eye. 
The reason I throw in this bonus fact here is because in terms of personas born of the purification process, these are the four that directly connect back to it. So Chie, Yukiko, and Yosuke were born from Izanagi in his purification, or the protagonist. It was the players arriving that entered into their lives, and almost immediately and at that same rough time, that being before the first dungeon's completion, awakened them to their personas through this alternate realm. By facing their dark selves and being purified through the players' actions, they were able to bird their personas, who eventually reached their ultimate potential and true form. Then who are the other members if not from this Izanagi purification process? Teddy, who of course for an unknown length of time had already existed among the shadows and partially developed himself and his ego, has the ultimate persona of Kamui Moshiri, which is actually not a single person or thing at all, but is instead an alternate world entirely outside of humans where all Kamui dwell. When the Ainu people of Japan went to worship the Kamui, they worshipped to the place of Kamui Moshiri. This makes sense as the shadows in the alternative world inside of the TV all take the forms of various Kamui, or spirits and gods. This sort of makes his ultimate persona mean that he is the god of the TV world. His persona also takes form of a rocket or a giant ship, as if he is in fact the literal representative for the world inside the TV, which of course couldn't fit him more perfectly. He also connects with another Persona user we meet later, so he's not completely separate from the others as it may seem now. The person most disconnected, perhaps, from the original story of Izanagi seems to be Kanji, his ultimate Persona Dairoku Tenmao coming from Buddhism instead of Shinto tradition. He's actually the antagonist to Buddhists, and isn't really seen as a good guy. I guess a connection you could make is that the rough evil impression that people generally have is similar to Kanji's delinquent self, even though his actual behavior is anything but. Dairoku Tenmao is also said to be based on the warlord Oda Nobunaga, who was well known especially for his cruel and vile actions toward others as he conquered Japan ruthlessly. This mimics some of Kanji's natural movesets, such as vile assault and cruel attack. It's not all negative though, Nobunaga was also said to be a great unifier in Japan, so I believe the idea here is, it's all about perspective, just like Kanji's rough exterior. He beats up people, sure, but he beats up gangs of people who are hurting others, and he wouldn't hurt his mother, a child, or any of the other residents in Inaba. While not his ultimate persona, and talked about more in Kanji's segment specifically, we should mention that Take Mikazuchi, his original persona, actually does originate from Izanagi. It's one of the eight gods that were born whenever Izanagi took the blade of Totsuka and cut Kagatsuchi into bits. Risei's ultimate persona is a Bodhisattva, a being from Buddhist tradition and history. Even though this sort of breaks the rule, I actually talk about all of this in her own segment, so I'm gonna leave it here for the most part. What should be noted is Himeko connects back to Amaterasu through a mirror that she's given, and that Kanon, Risei's true self, links more directly to her place as an idol. The last party member to join the pack, and so the last one I'll cover, is of course Naoto. Naoto Shirogane's ultimate persona is Yamato Takeru, who, like Risei's initial persona, comes from the same dynasty or greater family line. Takeru, who is known among other things like being an emperor, as the one who dressed up as a woman during a celebration in order to personally assassinate warriors, using the guys to cover their tracks. I think the correlation makes sense with Naoto in your head, but I'll address it more in my full Naoto video. Yamato Takeru was also said to have many run-ins with the Ainu tribesmen, who of course reference back to Teddy as well. But I think more specifically, this idea of dressing the opposite sex to assassinate your enemies comes back to how Naoto put on the clothes of the opposite sex so that she could be accepted by the police force who otherwise seek to invalidate her. I can't wait to cover how these characters play into their mythological roles in not a just kind of on-the-nose summary type of position in Persona 4 Golden as a whole, but I hope you enjoyed this surface level yet also overly researched video. I'm not immune to flaws. If you have any questions or thoughts, please leave them as a comment below. And like, as well as share this video where Persona fans can be found and for whoever might find them interesting. There's plenty more videos to come, and if you didn't feel satisfied by the amount of detail here, I assure you they will be covered in more than full enough detail in their own individual segments. Thank you again, and see you soon.